Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. In this episode, we're going to cover ongoing tensions uh, between Ukraine and the Russian Federation. Uh, a lot of a lot of moving pieces to this right now. Uh, there is a continued intelligence coming out of the region region that would indicate a very robust and clandestine buildup of Russian forces uh, very close to the border of uh, Ukraine. Now, what is different about this buildup than the buildup that occurred uh, in April of uh, this year? So again, in April of this year, there was a significant buildup, some, some estimates of up to 150,000 Russian uh, troops uh, around the Ukraine. And that was done in a very bold and uh, overt manner, meaning uh, Russian forces were, were moved in broad daylight, uh, where many media sources and, and many individuals uh, could observe the, the movement of these Russian forces uh, to the border of the Ukraine. And what was even more concerning uh, was many of these forces were coming from other uh, group army areas. Uh, as you can see here on my map, I'm going to take away the naval, aerospace, air defense forces. Uh, so for instance, the 41st Army. Uh, again, a uh, very large formation based uh, near the border of uh, Kazakhstan and uh, in between Kazakhstan and, and Mongolia. Uh, with some elements all the way down in Tajikistan, but but by and by most of the elements of the of of the forty first army, uh, those units were from the mechanized brigades and possibly uh, the special forces brigades that are not directly attached to the forty first army, uh, but are attached to the uh, to the GRU and Russian intelligence. But these forces, uh, reportedly in their equipment, uh, was moved uh, all the way west many, many uh, hundreds and thousands of miles, not hundreds of thousands, but thousands of miles, to the, uh, the border of the, of the Ukraine. Now, those personnel were then withdrawn after they declared, they, meaning the Russians, declared that they were backing off forces. And then obviously there was that discussion between Putin and, uh, and Joe Biden. And that seemed to alleviate tensions, uh, at least for a very, very short period of time. Uh, but obviously things are changing, tensions tend, are, are continuing to increase, and right now what, what is different uh, in this buildup uh, than the one that occurred in April, uh, this, is, this is being done uh, with a Maskarova or in a clandestine fashion, in a covert manner, meaning uh, the Russian military is trying to do its best uh, to uh, not allow Western intelligence agencies to observe the movements of troops and formations uh, to the border of the Ukraine. Now, how good uh, are they actually at, uh, at doing this in a, in a clandestine manner? Well, obviously uh, not, the, not the greatest because Western media and uh, the, uh, the State Department, the Central Intelligence Agency, are, are leaking this information to the media. And, and in all actuality, uh, they are also very concerned uh, that the chatter that they're hearing out of the, uh, the Russian Federation would indicate that quite possibly the Russians could be looking to launch a fairly significant military operation into the Ukraine uh, in uh, this this winter, so possibly December January time frame, is is what we're possibly looking at. Now, will that actually happen? Again, very hard to say. Uh, at this point, uh, we could say that these these Russian military buildups near the Ukraine are uh, tantamount to crying wolf a lot of times because we've seen this over and over and over again. We've seen these snap military exercises. And now with that being said, the, the Russians are, are obviously very proficient at moving its army around its, its vast terrain very quickly, very professionally. And uh, we're seeing that uh, quite possibly uh, again. But there are also elements of uh, what, what we are hearing is quite possibly some intercepted uh, chatter, some, some real uh, information 
that uh, Russia could be ready to go ahead and proceed with a military operation in the Ukraine. And again, uh, it's probably an opportune moment for the Russian Federation to conduct such an operation. Uh, again, uh, you have a very, very weak leader in the United States right now. Uh, you have an individual who is, uh, you probably could say, depending on the circles that you interact with, you know, he's incompetent. Uh, and he's also suffering from possible uh, late stage dementia, if not something something else as as well. And again, uh, when the United States does not have a decisive strong leader, uh, obviously uh, some nations uh, may take advantage of that. And I think we're we're probably going to see that uh, now. Now, with that being said, uh, uh, MFAM, Military and Foreign Affairs Network. Uh, I, I believe that the United States uh, does not need to get into a conflict between Ukraine and Russia. It would be incredibly unwise, and it would not be prudent to uh, what would probably become a third world war. Uh, furthermore, the likelihood of winning uh, such an engagement against the Russian Federation, if the the, the, the Russian Federation goes into full mobilization, the likelihood of winning that conflict uh, is probably uh, not great at this time. Uh, and then we could also quite possibly see other moves, other escalation processes that would include a move into Estonia, Latvia, possibly Lithuania uh, as well, uh, if this really kind of spiraled out of control. But again, I think you have to really look at this if you go back into, let's say, 1989. And, uh, you know, back then you were looking at tens of thousands of Russian troops in Poland, Czechoslovakia. It was obviously not the Czech and Slovak republics at the time. Uh, Hungary uh, and, and other areas. And the Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union, as was Belarus, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. Now, that has changed. And uh, very quickly, NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, quickly moved in, and uh, uh, Poland then joined NATO, as did Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia. And now uh, Ukraine is actively looking, quite possibly, to both join NATO and the EU. And that is a red line for uh, the Russians. Uh, obviously, uh, I would say that if we go back into history, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia is probably a, a red line, would have been a red line as well, if uh, the the, uh, the 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 former Soviet Union, the Russian Federation, would not have been so weak at the time that had occurred. Uh, but again, um, uh, the the idea that Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania could actively be defended uh, as a NATO ally against an a Russian attack is is simply ridiculous, especially the way NATO has been neglected. Uh, if you look at the militaries. Of, uh, of Germany, if you look at the military of uh, the United Kingdom, uh, they've really done a poor job of, of keeping a robust and capable military force that, that could uh, defend the, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. They became over-reliant on the United States. And uh, uh, right now, I mean, we're probably seeing uh, Poland is probably more of a uh, a more robust contributor to NATO defense than than Germany, uh, I would say. And if if it's, if there was a move against the Baltics, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, I highly doubt, highly highly doubt, the Germans would uh, would get into the conflict, thus making NATO irrelevant. And could that be something that uh, Putin is looking at? Does he is he does he understand that? If, if certain moves are made, it would uh, inherently d uh, destroy the North Atlantic Treaty Organization without firing a shot. I, I think the culture uh, in Western Europe uh, has become weak and decadent. They've lost their warrior culture. Uh, it's, it's gone. That, that uh, it, it no longer exists. You have uh, some some very uh, leftist liberal females uh, running the German armed forces for an extended period of time, and uh, it has has really led to the atrophy of the force structure in in Germany, and and again uh, you're now seeing that in the United States you're seeing uh, some of this this 
this woke politic uh, starting to enter uh, in the United States military, and especially when you see uh, transgender admirals being promoted because simply they're not best suited for the role is simply because they're a transgender person they were they were given that role and and frankly it's it's f for for me it's it, it's both weird and unprofessional and again uh that is the state right now we're we're looking at it, some of these these western militaries that are taking place and i would assume that both russia and uh, china seeing this are are quite literally licking their chops uh, when you have the the atrophy of the warrior culture combined with a, a uh, an era where you are not economically uh, attempting to keep your forces uh, both uh, professional, competent, and aggressive, and well equipped, then obviously uh, that force is going to atrophy and not be able to respond to a national crisis. And again, I uh, simply do not believe that uh, many members of NATO would come to the aid of the Baltics, much less the Ukraine. I, I really don't think Western Europe is going to um, uh, do, do really do anything other than possibly support uh, special forces. Uh, maybe equipment would be delivered to the Ukrainians. Uh, but other than that, uh, I probably would say that the that the Ukraine is on its own for this conflict, if and when this conflict uh, starts. But again, a lot uh, it, it would appear right now, uh, quite possibly, uh, the Russians are preparing for something uh, in, in the winter. And uh, we, you know, we continue. To, we we've heard that uh, you know most conflicts are are May summer conflicts. Uh, but uh, that's simply something you can't count on because the, the Russians in, invaded uh, uh, Finland uh, in, in the winter. <laughs> so again, uh, in the 30s, the, the Russians uh, launched an invasion in the winter. And uh, there are some benefits to launching an operation uh, in the winter. And I'll uh, not to get into that. It, uh, this is already going to be a lengthy video. Uh, but again, um, a, lot of, a lot of forces right now are moving uh, to the border of the Ukraine. That includes the 41st uh, and the 1st uh, Tank Army, which is uh, based uh, near, near Moscow. Uh, but, but most concerning is these forces from the Far East uh, that are now being deployed uh, significant distances to the border of the Ukraine. So we'll continue to keep an eye on this uh, and definitely report uh, as events warrant. Have a great day, everybody.